line. I just mm-hmm. thought, okay. Welcome to I'm Spiritual, Damn It. I'm your host, Jennifer Weigel. And joining me in studio, Susan Rowland. Thank you for being here. Psychic medium, ex- you know, talented ghostbuster. Let's see, what else can <laughs> we put on your resume? Because you do know. a lot of things. <laughs> how are you, my dear? I'm fine. You know how much I love being here with you. I love having I you. I love you. We, we're the yin and yang. You know how many people have said that about you really? and I? Yeah, it's very interesting. I have a lot of clients that say, you have to do more with Jen. Because Aww. you both do a great job together. And I said, really? You really like that? They go, yeah. yeah. Well, I think mutual respect helps. Well, no. I can't but I, do what you do, young lady. Yeah, but I can't do what you do. Okay, so there, so you, there go. you go. We make a good team. You see dead people, I just talk about it. So perfect. We were literally just talking before we started rolling how you came from a recent... Oh, I don't know, encounter at another radio station because they had a haunted bathroom. Excuse me? It, it's the truth. It what was, happened? It, well, yesterday I was appearing on WGCI and I was running late and mm-hmm. I had to go to the bathroom. And usually I stop and knock on the producer's door so they can buzz me in. Okay. So I said, screw this. I'm going to go to the bathroom. So I go to the washroom and I have my purse and my big bag uh-huh. and I take the big bag and nobody's in the washroom. The uh-huh. washroom is very pretty. So I put the bag in the sink. This is at WGCI. Yeah. Okay. Got it. All right. Okay. Another station here in I Chicago for those who are listening. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So I put now if you've got a bag and you put it in the sink, mm-hmm. it's it's going to stay. Well, sure. I it figured, should. <laughs> Unless there's an earthquake, it should stay there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So I'm going to the washroom and mm-hmm. doing my thing. And all of a sudden, I hear my bag go boom on the floor. Yeah. So I'm thinking, wait a minute. Did somebody just walk in? Oh, my gosh. And interesting enough, nobody was there, but the bag was plopped on the floor. Whoa. So I says, okay, somebody's here. Mm-hmm. I didn't know yet who it was. So now I'm proceeding to wash my hands and I'm washing and I'm soaping up my hands and I, you know, those sensors for mm-hmm. the water. Sure. So you're putting your hands under no water. I'm like, really? So I go to the next one. Nothing, nothing, nothing. nothing. They've got about eight, nine sinks across the, you know, right. bathroom. So there's, I take two steps back. All the sensors on the sink go off. Oh, they're messing with you. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it gets better. So now I go to proceed to dry my hands and get the, you know, the paper towels. Mm -hmm. Nothing. They had one sensor of paper towels on one and the other. Mm -hmm. So I go to the other one across. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I'm just looking at it. As soon as I went to the opposite side, the opposite paper dispenser pulls out. Okay, so you think this is like a team of ghosts just trying to like joke around with you and make you freaked out, but... They don't realize you actually deal with this all the time, so you're not freaked out? Well, it reminded me of WGN. Okay. Okay. Uh, the old building on WGN, mm-hmm. because you know how yeah, haunted that tower. is, mm-hmm. right? Tribute Tower, right. Okay. So all of a sudden, Melissa Foreman comes in. Okay. And I go, hi. And she says, oh, hi, how are you? I go, fine. And that for those listening who don't know, she's a another radio host here in the city of Chicago, if you're not listening from Chicago. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh-huh. And, and a very sweet woman. And it, it, I, ironically, I was listening to her on my way down. And I said, Melissa, I was listening to you. you she does this thing with predictions of, mm-hmm. of the sexes of children and babies. Right. But, you know, so I says, you've got to do this again. And she's always right on the money. And she goes, right. you know, it's so funny. She goes, we were talking about it. I was thinking about it. I go, you have a gift to do that. She says, I've been doing it since 1999. And I seem to be always right of who's pregnant and what they're going to have. Mm-hmm. So she goes, all right, I got to talk to you. She says, do you notice anything weird in the bathroom? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I started to laugh mm-hmm. and I said, yeah. She goes, I mean, do you really like think that there's like haunted or spirits here? And I'm like, yeah. She goes, we need a good psychic medium. <laughs> okay. I, I started, I said, I'm a psychic medium. She goes, wait, no, really? Oh, I she said, thought yeah. she was she just did, talking to you like she, girl in the bathroom talk? Uh, yeah. Didn't know you were psychic medium. Did not know anything. Oh, that's hilarious. And she says, wait a minute, where are you going? I go, WGCI. She goes, wait, I got to grab you. Just two <laughs> minutes, two minutes. I go, Melissa, I'm really late. She I goes, can. just two minutes, let me, I'll pre-record you. Right. So I go in there and I meet her producer, really nice guy. I think his name's Jim. Mm-hmm. And we started talking. I talked about the story. And she just said, this is amazing. Well, it turned out it's a male that they know exactly who the male was, who is deceased. And I look, I go, it's a very friendly spirit. And no, when you tingle, he's not watching. He just likes to play with the gadgets, the sinks, the dryers. So this isn't an ancient haunting. This is more of a recent passing. You know, I don't know when he passed, um, but he's got a giggle to him. 
Okay. Melissa and her producer knew exactly who it was. Wow. And they said this is exactly what he did. Mm -hmm. He would play jokes all day long, sweetest guy in the world, and he'd sit and he giggled. The way you said giggled, that's exactly what he did. So that's when she took my information. She goes, oh, I got to have you on the show. I said, yeah, I'll come. But but. There is something about that bathroom. There's something about that bathroom. Well, you were just in the WGN bathroom. How did it rate? Did anybody play jokes on you in there? No. I was pretty good with that. (laughs) This was a peaceful bathroom. That's good to know. But, you know, this brings up a good point. When something gets renovated, um, it can stir things up. When you're moving walls, when you're you're changing things around for old properties. You've been on... Ghost hunts, and of course, October is often a very busy month for you with yeah. a lot of activity. Are you noticing more activity happens in October just because of Halloween, or is that just an old wives' tale? It's an old wives' tale. Okay. It, the most activity that anybody is always going to get, and most psychic mediums do not know this, okay? It's during Lent. Really? It's never Halloween. Wow. Um, you know, Lent is the souls are free to roam for 40 days and 40 nights. And it starts with the Jewish calendar, the Orthodox calendar. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what date exactly? That is, well, it's followed Timeline. by the Julian calendar, not the Gregorian calendar. So basically, if you've ever heard of Easter and then you see, oh, the Greeks are about a week after us. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's because they follow the Julian and, you know, regular Easter is Gregorian. So basically, it's 40 days and 40 mm-hmm. nights of the Passover calendar, or the Orthodox calendar, as you say. Now, wherever the souls are, they're free to roam. And that includes animals, animal spirits. Now, it's very hard for me to drive in the evening all year round, let alone when it's Lent season, because all the souls come out, and that includes deer, dog. And how many times I put the brakes on thinking, oh my God, there's an animal there. But it was just a yeah. spirit. And then they just kind of go, uh, you know, angels mm-hmm. in the outfield. When you see the spirits kind of just go and fade, that's exactly what the animals do. They go and they fade. Mm. So it's Lent. So if somebody sees a specific animal a lot, mm-hmm. is that a sign or a signal? Do you believe that that could be their spirit totem? Or yes. does, does that mean there's they should look up the spiritual meaning of skunk or something like that? Yeah, Um I remember one time Dave had come to my office. And Dave Olson. I, Dave Olson, Chicago Double Paranormal. Paranormal. Mm-hmm. Love him, love yep. him, love him. Great guy, yes. great team, whole bit, what he does. And you guys work together sometimes on ghost busts and he, sending spirits into the light, getting the haunted spirits out of properties. He does an amazing job with the equipment alone that he has. I mean, he is the traditional <laughs> ghost buster. Right. Okay. Right. He's got the cameras <laughs> and the audio recordings and all that stuff and the flashlights and the ambulance outside. I, yep. I, you have to see his van you have to see right, it it's right. unbelievable <laughs> yeah. you have to get you with a picture right? of all his stuff i believe it's it. something to see wow. um but yeah you know um all of that exists but one time dave had come and i had a, a spiritual cleanser that she puts light of god into you it's mm-hmm. it's an amazing uh what she does but um one of the, what dave was experiencing was an animal spirit guide Really? Yeah, and he thought it was the coolest thing. I think it was an eagle. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he says, Susan, I've never seen this before, and this eagle was all over me. Right. So I do believe in that. I do. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen my animal spirit guides. Mine's a female lion and elephants. 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 And baby can a, ones and Can they change ones. over time, our spirit guides? You know, maybe they add to them. It's not that they change, but then more come. Mm-hmm. Okay, just like spirit guides. It starts with certain ones, and then you get new ones. Right. And it's nice. And sometimes we get the ones that we just need at that time. And that's a good point. So what you need at the time. When I first started on this journey, gosh, 20 years ago, investigating people such as yourself, I was grieving, you know, I was questing, all these things were going on. Um, And this was before before my dad even passed away. I was curious about the paranormal. But then when he did pass away, I got really engulfed in it because I thought, oh, gosh, I got to do some research and be really responsible here because I didn't want anyone to get duped. Right. Didn't want anyone to get ripped off. And I didn't really know if I believed that people could do this. I mean, that was just the bottom line. I just Mm -hmm. thought, okay. But as a kid, I was always super sensitive and would get stomach aches around really mean people. And I would have Mm -hmm. these instincts about things and they would always turn out right. You know, even without any evidence, I just just had a feeling and they would turn out right. So 
when I was grieving the loss of my my dad, and I think about a lot of people that come to me and they're grieving the loss of a of a child or the loss of a spouse, or you know, there's intense grief. And mm-hmm. in your work, you have people come in horrible, unbelievable, horrible things. Horrible. How do you help them? I I mean, I know just because people have to move through it in their own pace, but I do see some people get so stuck and they get addicted to talking to people like you, right? They don't feel that they have the power within themselves to turn on their own inner GPS or intuition. So they reach outside of themselves for information, even though they're getting signs all day. They could be getting winks all day, but they don't, they, they don't, don't know how to translate it. it. They don't know how to translate it. I think that's it's like a foreign language and they don't understand what's being the, the information that's being said to them. Right. That's why I think they reach out. Right. They just don't understand what does it mean? But do you think some people get too hooked oh god i call them psychic junkies okay so do you tell some of them to go away and call you back in six months i have said to people do me a favor if you're serious Mm -hmm. find someone you connect with Mm -hmm. i don't care if it's me or the guy next door or whoever you want to find that you are physically and emotionally and spiritually connected you have to feel a connection right but no i'm talking about when they call you every three months you you, the psychic junkies got to tell them to Um, you know ease off interesting i have a lot of people for different things i have Mm -hmm. a lot of corporate people that Mm -hmm. come and see me and it's amazing because a lot of their their lives are forever changing based on their work now they like to get a lot of insight with somebody that's going to come in with a deal or what do you think about this and then when you're right about it they want they they love your accuracy so you're like a consultant on steroids oh god yeah it isn't just- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well you kind of yeah, are yeah yeah you kind of are so here's the thing if you have a good track record mm-hmm. and you're right they're going to seek you out more right of it's course. all well it, it's not that you're always right because you know what everyone's human we're not god right, right but when you can sit there and really lead them in a right direction it's very comforting it's very soothing here i'll flip it i've right. got people that have gone and see uh you know their their therapists mm-hmm. and they'll say what you said to me in an hour why couldn't my therapist have told me that? And I go, because they want to see you keep coming. I can right. care less if you never come again. <laughs> right. I'm just going to give you the message, mm-hmm. tell you what you have to know, right. explain it, why right. I'm saying this to you. Right. And then you go from there. You talked about um, an energy healing. How important is it for people to do their own cleansing and healing? That's a great question. Um, I think, you know, listen, I do it every day. Yeah. Every single day I do it. I just did it last night. I'll probably do it again tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the morning, I start and I clear out my office before I start the day with clients. So every every day, I clean me. Mm-hmm. I clean the office. And then I bring the whole team to me in the shower when I'm starting my day in, in a cleansing, beautiful water. So you have a ritual, uh, yeah, not yeah. only with the water, but also with the sage and I'm mm-hmm. guessing Palo Santo or spray or some sort of cleansing something. Yeah, okay. I do. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's very important to do that. I think it's even important to do and cleanse your car too. Mm-hmm. And I always say that. But more than that, you have to really have a belief in this. Right. Okay. So like I said, you know, if you don't have time, make uh, an appointment on your phone mm-hmm. to do this. Right. Pencil it in and say, okay, today, Sunday, from 10 to 11, I am going to consciously clean my space, clear it out. Well, people treat their cars better than they treat their bodies. You're right. They, they do. get it detailed. They they wash it. They're, they're shining up everything. Mm-hmm. The gas is low. They fill it up. The engine light goes on. They get it tuned up. But mm-hmm. when it comes to our own tune-ups, forget it. They don't do it. Or no. how about paying attention to where we go? Yeah. I had a client this uh, this evening before coming here. And I, she was such a sweet girl, but she says, for the last three years, I have not had good luck. Mm-hmm. And I says, well, and she goes, do you see anything? And I said, honestly, I said, have you been to New Orleans? She goes, actually, I have. And she says, I go, did you have a good time? She goes, oh, it was wonderful. I loved it. And I says, but I bet you when you came back, everything started to spiral. Mm-hmm. Now, I love New Orleans, what I can see of it. Have I ever physically gone there? No, I have no desire to. Right. Now you're going to say, what? Come on. I always get a message for me. I'm only speaking about me because of who I am. Mm -hmm. I think it would be detrimentally the worst decision I could make based on the amount of energy that's there. I don't need it. I don't need anything negative coming on to me in such a way that I can't shrug it off. Right. So pay attention 
to where you go and what you do and what you interact with. It's mm-hmm. a very important thing. I know people who just go to cemeteries just well, for fun. It, well, I just talked about this on the radio station. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, Halloween's coming. Let's not do two things. L- let's show respect to the people in the cemeteries, okay, mm-hmm. and to the, our loved ones that are buried there, okay. But let's keep that off off limits. Second of all, stay away from the Ouija boards, p- people. Yeah. You don't need to inquire. Now, anyway, somebody, uh, Leon had said to me on the radio station, he goes, well, do you think that we can facilitate something bad through a Ouija board? I go, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I've got people in their 40s and 50s, and if you would see how their lives have turned upside down because of what they brought in from kids as teenagers playing. Right. And it's not playing anymore. Well, you know, we were having a conversation with Dave Olson from the Paranormal Society actually about this. And I actually got into an argument with another healer about this because she so completely believes in the positive of the Ouija board that it's sort of like with cards, you can use it for good. Sometimes people use tarot cards and that conjures up negativity. She's basically like, however you use the tool, if you bring in the light of whatever your source is, she believes it can be used for good. And I said, I disagree. I disagree too. Because here you are with this thing Mm -hmm. that basically is calling in anything that's lost to find a home and come have a stage. Exactly. And that's a great way because you are an open portal. And here's the thing. People are amateurs. They are not understanding how to protect themselves and no amount of sage is going to protect them when it comes to something like that if you have a spirit that's attached to you look out and if that spirit makes a home with you Mm -hmm. and your surroundings you will never have a peaceful day right oh well dave was sharing a story about how he went on a ghost bust and came home and brought someone with him and he had to call you yeah (laughs) Because it was going up and down the halls. And you know, this is a Chicago police department guy who turned paranormal investigator that doesn't know what to do with his house because things are going bump in the night. Uh, so he called you. He, he, but you know, he did, but he got rid of it and was yeah. good, you yeah. know, and I told him what to do. But yeah, but I, I give him a lot of credit. So here's what he does before every investigation, he yeah. sages his team down in himself. Yep. After the investigation, everybody gets resaged and everybody gets re blessed. Yep. And this way, everybody is free and clear of not bringing it home right so and that's the other thing too let's think about this as we're gearing up for the holidays protection with parties so you have people people are going to have cookie parties and (laughs) and ornament parties and thanksgiving and all those toxic relatives are going to sit at one table and bitch about politics and so how can you clean your space after everybody leaves is there enough sage in the world (laughs) to help us all through the holidays and we talked about this sage is available at you know grocery stores now you can buy it in bulk on Amazon, but you know, it, it's going to be exhausting, but you got to get used to it. You know what? I, I'm sorry. It is. It is exhausting. A lot of people go, oh God, I, but I saged three months ago or I saged when I moved in. You have to do it at least once a week. Right. Think about the <sighs> dust on your floors or the vacuuming of your carpet. Would you vacuum your carpet every three months? I don't think so. Would you take um, a shower once every three months? What? <laughs> How bad would we stay? I know. Exactly. I would, Forget it. Yes. I'd be really bad. Okay. And you know, Anybody out there listening, <laughs> after you take a shower and you always come out and you go, oh, I feel so much better. That's right. That is because it's go. a sacred ceremony. It's getting That's stuff right. off. How about getting a good Epsom salt bath or, mm-hmm. a, or a sea scrub bath? That's okay. another good thing. You could do that in the shower. You can do that in the bath. Right. That's something you can do really, really well, too. Okay. You know, we've talked a lot about how you go and help some people who... Uh, inherit a home that might have a tragic circumstance that they didn't know about. Mm -hmm. And one of the conversations that we talked about at the well when I recently interviewed you was that you had just come straight from a house where there was a family, it was a murder. Mm -hmm. It was a murder-suicide. Right. And you took all of them in. Talk to me about that. Well, I did that with Dave. With Dave from Paranormal. Oh, God. Yeah. 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 And that was something. I have to tell you, that was something. Walk me through what happened. Well, I didn't know anything about it. The and, case? Well, usually Dave doesn't tell me anything about the places I go. He gives me the address. He wants to know if I'm available. He'll tell me what time he's going to be there. And mm-hmm. any time after he's there, I can come. Right. That's it. Okay. He doesn't really give me too much. Okay. Okay. So um, I asked my husband, I said, would you like to take a ride with me to unincorporated? I think it was Downers or Darien or something. Mm-hmm. I forgot now. Downers Grove. Oh, was it Downers yeah. Grove? Mm-hmm. Okay. And he goes, why can't you go? And I says, oh, honey, I says, because, you know, you're really good at this and stuff. Truth was, I really didn't want to drive. Right. So I'm buttering him up. I go, you know, you you, you just do it. <laughs> he goes, fine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, as we're in the truck, we're driving. 
and I see abundance of electrical wires hanging from the ceiling. And I says, I wonder what that means. So Tom goes, what do you see? And I said, all these lights coming down from the ceiling. Hmm. He goes, well, I'm sure you're going to find out when you go. Now, mind you, he's got to live with me. Right. So he, And he doesn't like the smell of sage, everybody. He can't so. stand it. <laughs> but, he, but he's not going to win. But he tolerates it. <laughs> he That's sure right. does, a yep. poor guy. Right, right. But anyway, so we get there, and Dave, of course, has got everything set up, and we meet with the uh, person who is renting this house. Okay. So this tragedy happened a few years ago in a house, a murder-suicide in Downers Grove, and now these people are renting it. Yeah, they remodeled it. They cleaned it all up. Mm -hmm. It looked beautiful. You never would know. And that's another thing. Just because things look great on the outside, let's see what the bare bones are going to reveal on the inside. Right. So she was a mess. She was crying. She was shaking, just calming her down. Because what had happened for her to experience such horrible horror? Like, what was she feeling? You know, a combination of being trapped. Mm-hmm. Is this thing going to hurt my son? They mm-hmm. had a, they had an only child. Oh, yeah. Um, a lot of things. And, right. you know, people are most scared when they're sleeping. Sure. Think about it. Because now vulnerable. you start thinking if you're sleeping, what's going to happen? Right. Right. So calmed her down. We got her calm and, and she got to leave. And then I started to go through the house and I started to actually go back in time. This is the way this works for me. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, I'm looking, but I'm standing outside of everything that I'm seeing. So picture you go to a movie theater and you're seeing the coming attractions. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you're seeing all these like cool things that are happening. Right. This is exactly how it works for me. Mm-hmm. And that's why I call it time traveling. I go back in time and I see everybody l- reliving what happened. Like a movie. It's playing out right in front of you. Mm-hmm. And I, you know what the sad part is? I can't do a damn thing. Right. Okay, mm-hmm. so he was having some kind of an argument. He had two daughters, this man, mm-hmm. and he would had an argument with one of the daughters. And with that, the daughter went upstairs to her room, and she slammed the door and locked it. And he went upstairs, and he said, you don't slam that door on me. He goes back upstairs. Mm-hmm. The wife is downstairs in the basement. He goes downstairs, goes and gets the gun. Mm-hmm. He goes back upstairs, and he starts shooting. I mean, he was on a rampage. Now, apparently, he must have lost his job or there was something that day that really happened really bad that probably Mm -hmm. set him off. And I think him having a big argument Mm -hmm. with his daughter was the icing on the cake. Right. But I actually saw that there was a cousin who was staying there that was hiding in the closet. Oh, wow. And he heard the whole thing. And he's shaking this poor little boy. This cousin? This cousin, yeah. But, okay, so he's shooting everybody. He shoots his daughters. He goes and he shoots. Now, his wife probably was trying to get away from him. Mm -hmm. And he goes after her and he shoots her. Mm -hmm. And then finally, he shoots himself. It was a very tragic story. And you saw all this. I saw all of it. So I, here's the way it works. I kind of see it all. And Mm -hmm. I say, okay, Dave, point your, here, this, 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 this is the area. Take your equipment, zoom in. Mm -hmm. He's going to get the voices. He's going to get the lights. He's going to get all of that stuff. And he gets it all on camera. He gets it on his recordings. It is the coolest thing with his equipment. Right. And Dave what came captures forward? It. What was all what, of it? The yeah. cries. He, you know, just everything that he, you know, he got spirits that were all talking. Mm-hmm. So now we go outside and we look at the garage and, you know, I'm looking at the garage. I'm like, I'm not getting anything with this garage. But now there's like a big workshop thing. So I says, what's this? They says, well, apparently he used to do his workshop stuff in there. I says, can you open it up? They said, yeah, we'll open it up. As soon as he opens it up and the lights are on, a gazillion wires are coming from the ceiling. Mm-hmm. So Tom, my husband, he goes, well, there's your wires. Right. <laughs> you know, well, what does that mean? <laughs> what do they mean? Well, it's it's almost like I'm getting a, the, the, the attractions mm-hmm. of things that are I'm about to uncover. Got it. OK. Mm-hmm. So now the irony was um, I go home. So you didn't put them in the light that night? No. OK. We just did the whole investigation. Just did the investigation. Oh, okay. yeah. All right. So now I go home. Mm-hmm. And the wife comes back to you at to your me. home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she says to me, he wasn't a bad man. Mm-hmm. My husband just had a lot of problems, right. but he never meant to hurt us. She says, can you really put us in the light? I said, I can. Mm-hmm. She says, okay. She says, but I don't want to do this by myself. I says, I'm going to put you all together. Right. She says, okay. Now that Tuesday I was supposed to go back 
to okay. Arizona. Uh-huh. Okay. No, 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 no. Oh, go back, back to, to the, the house. house. I see. Uh-huh. Okay. So that was a Saturday night. Mm-hmm. That Tuesday, I had an appointment with the woman who was renting the house. Mm-hmm. And I promised her I would take the family and get them going. Right. Okay? So that Saturday night, the wife comes to me and said that her husband wasn't a bad man. The next day, I get the husband who killed everybody. He says, are you sure that I'm not going to burn in hell? Mm-hmm. I says, you're not going to burn in hell. He goes, how can I be sure? And I said, because there isn't a hell. Now, for those who are listening to this, who have had tragedies, they want to know that there is a hell so that there's justice. It's so not, how do you explain that? Well, you <laughs> you get justice by having to come back and doing it again at the level that you're at. And you also feel all the pain that you put out. So that man who killed all those people will feel the pain of those he killed and then the ripple effects of all that pain and relive that in a life review, right? Absolutely. It's called your book of life. Your book of life could be pretty hellacious depending if you killed people or didn't. But think about it. You don't have to kill people. Think about everything that you consciously or subconsciously did wrong to Mm -hmm. somebody. Right. Okay, you're going to feel each and every one of those persons, these people's pain. Correct. And everything that you've given joy to someone... You're or you've feel. touched, you're going to mm-hmm. feel that too. Now, what is the what's the reason? Mm-hmm. God wants you to know what the difference is, so you know how to be for soul growth. Don't you see? Mm-hmm. Now, everybody comes here on their on their own levels, right? And everybody exits here on their own levels. Your level, my level, your child's level, we're different. And this man didn't want to go on any sort of exit because he thought he was going to be punished. That's right. You only get the light. And I always preach this. You get the light for 72 hours. Mm -hmm. The light then becomes dimmer and dimmer until it closes down. Mm -hmm. Now you've got no exit point to leave. Until someone like you comes in and says, hey, so what do you do to open it up? Well, there's a, there's a ritual that I do do. Okay. Okay. And I do that. So let's get back to the man. He comes well, to you and he says, I, I did talk to him mm-hmm. and I told him that I assure you that I will put you in the light and there will be two angels waiting for you. Mm-hmm. And Were they you will... just hoping for that or just, no, like I you... call upon them. Okay. Got it. I do. Mm-hmm. And they come and they do it. Mm-hmm. He says, I'm trusting you. And I said, you'll see. Mm-hmm. He says, all right, take me now. I says, no, I'm going to do it on Tuesday. I mm-hmm. says, you've got a day and a half. I says, and I'm going to go to the house and I'm going to put your wife, your two daughters and you through this light. Mm-hmm. Together. Together. Mm-hmm. So I come back on Tuesday and. And really there's no time and space over there anyway. There's so it's no like time. another day and a half felt like probably five seconds for them. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Very mm-hmm. much so. Mm-hmm. So I come back and the woman who's renting the house, she's really scared. Because there was no clearing or cleansing. It was just an investigation. Right. That's Dave's department. And he did a great job with Which it. Which I was going to say, did you tell them to go to a hotel or something? <laughs> they had to spend a couple more nights in that mess? <laughs> Dave was there. Oh, my I, gosh. I got to say, at least. I would have gone to the Dells. I would have been like, I'm out of here. Uh, Dave had to have been there for, yeah. what, eight to 12 hours? Wow. Easy. Wow. I mean, when he goes under these investigations, he's there literally right. all night. I'm sure. No, you got to see it. So what happened? Um, well, um, I sat on the stairs. Mm-hmm. And she had all the curtains closed. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay. And so I says, well, what do you, you know, just let me do my thing. And I started to do my thing. Now I closed my eyes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I did my thing and it took me about 15 minutes. Ironically, when I opened up my eyes and after I was done getting them all to go to that light, mm-hmm. I opened up my eyes and I see her crying. The mom? The mom who mm-hmm. rented the house. Oh, the and one who's living. Who's living. Okay. And I looked at her and I said, are you okay? I go, why are you crying? Mm-hmm. She says, if I didn't see what you did, I wouldn't have believed it. I says, well, what is it? Now, everything that I do is silent. Right. You don't know what I'm doing, what I'm right. saying. You don't know anything. Right. You're not giving a play by play. No, I'm not. Yeah. But she was sitting in the dining room watching me, which I had no idea she was doing. Mm-hmm. But she was crying. And I said, what's wrong? And she said, do you see how all of these blinds are down? I said, yeah. She said, you were glowing. Mm-hmm. There is a light. Mm-hmm. Because the light that you invited was all over you. Wow. She saw it. She saw it. I never knew this. Right. Because when I do this, mm-hmm. I go in such a deep trance and I close my eyes when I'm doing it. I had no idea. Right. And she says, oh, my God, right. what you did, mm-hmm. I can't even imagine what it's like when people go into that light. 
Wow. So there you have it. So I even learned something about myself through somebody else that had to tell me. I had no idea. Totally. I said, you can rest assured they're gone. Right. And you will be able to be safe in this home. And these people were never going to hurt you, but it was time for them to go. Mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful thing to do. Yeah. Now, what happens after that? It's Mm -hmm. in God's hands. Right. Right. And have you heard from them? Any more complaints? No. Good. None. Good. None. So it's a beautiful thing to be able to do that. But, you know, peace is something. It is, but it's also difficult when there's so many moving parts, right? Like, so, for example, a prison or where there was a graveyard. You know, I just recently discovered um, that there that Lincoln Park Zoo was a graveyard, thanks to Dave Olson. But, you know, that was that that the Chicago fire burned all of the, you know, graves and wiped it all out, all the evidence. And there were thousands of bodies under, you know, the lions. Wow. (laughs) And that's just so how do you deal with something like that on such a mag? you know, magnificent front. I mean, when they're, or battlefields, right? Have you ever been to Civil War areas where, you know, you've seen stuff like that? Mm -hmm. And how is that for you? Um, Tragic. Yeah. You know, you know, I was watching something with my husband, I don't know, a few weeks back, and it was based on traumatic stress disorder, Mm -hmm. the trauma. Post-traumatic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm watching, and I know, I think, a fair amount. I'm not a doctor, but I, I, I can understand it pretty good. Sure. And you know where my mind went when I was watching it? Hmm. I said to Tom, you see what people go through with trauma? Mm-hmm. He goes, it's horrible. I go, that's right. It's, it lingers. Everything that I see is trauma. Mm-hmm. And do you have any idea what I see? And He goes, I know it's gory what you see. Mm-hmm. I says, and I have no one to help me with that. But amazingly, I feel so protected where I don't feel I need psychiatric help. Mm -hmm. It's just a way to see it so I can understand the story and to help them through it. Right. But it's interesting. If you saw what I saw Mm -hmm. and felt what I felt, you'd be a hot mess. Right. And I said to my husband, I think I finally get it now why it never sticks enough on me. Wow. Well, I think a lot of it is that you do your work. Yeah, I've met a lot of people like you who don't do their work and they eat like crap and they drink and they smoke and they never get a clearing or sage or do any of that stuff. And and I feel that that makes them susceptible to the negative and dark energies and actually affects their ability to do oh, what that's true. you do and to do it well. It's a good point because, you know, there's a lot of psychic mediums and they're really good people and they're mm-hmm. good and they have a beautiful gift. Mm-hmm. But I noticed something they're very addictive. They have a very addictive personality. And I I understand it, though. I don't mm-hmm. begrudge it. I get it. Because they do it to numb. Think sure. about it. Mm-hmm. That gets me in, in a, you know, and I've talked about this with other people, schizophrenia. Think mm-hmm. about that. I truly believe people do hear those voices. They may not be the voices from God. And it could be a little bit not so good. It makes them do some bad things. <clears throat> but I do believe that they do hear them. Now, there's a debate with doctors saying, no, it's the mind playing tricks. I disagree. But then again, when you go into surgery and you're under anesthesia, you're, you go to a place, you get to meet your loved ones, mm-hmm. you see these things that you would never be able to see if you're not under that drug. Right. But yet doctors will tell you it doesn't exist. Right. Of course. I believe it does. Mm -hmm. And you have spoken with spirits that have been there and that have reported back to you. So what is your absolute belief that you think you know for sure about what happens when we get to the other side? I think that you're greeted with love, Mm -hmm. but you're also doing the work up there. It's not all fun and games. Mm -hmm. When you rest in peace, what do you think that actually means? Resting in peace means that if you had a disability in life, mental or physical, Mm -hmm. you are free from that disability. You are free if you were dying of cancer, you had something debilitating, you're free from all pain. Right. But now the work begins. So you're resting in peace to be and direct your best work for your soul. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. People get that mixed up what resting in peace means it means you have no interruptions for you to do the work that you consciously now have to do morally for your soul 
Do you believe that if you are feeling pain and someone rips you off or somebody, you know, murders a family member that maybe karmically, because I recently interviewed somebody who believes that if, if that ever happens to you, it's because they karmically feel justified because the tables were turned. Well, I do believe that you are connected to all of these people that are in your soul plane. Got it. I totally believe in that. So yes, I agree with that. So if you ripped somebody off in another lifetime, chances are they're ripping you off or the the roles are changing. Yes. So you, your mother could have been your daughter. Oh, very or much. Your brother could have been your father. Yes. Or, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, when they say, oh, I married somebody who's just like my father, which I did. Mm-hmm. I married a man who is a carbon copy of my husband or my father in a personality. My father is the nicest man you'll ever meet. Yeah. And Tom will do anything for anybody. Exactly. And I, he is a carbon copy of mm-hmm. my father. Right. I, I always seem to love those type of men. Right, right. So okay? you picked weird. that. Yeah, and I then, did. Then there are other people who pick like the worst people. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm not saying, but because they have some sort of soul lesson or plan, like they signed up for it. Do you believe that we choose our parents, that we choose our spouse before we even get here just to learn specific lessons? Yes, you okay. have to. Yeah. Because why? It's free will. Mm -hmm. God doesn't make us do anything that we are not ready for. We didn't try to do. Mm -hmm. This is all free will. Now, where does it take us? That's the lesson that we need to experience. Mm -hmm. All right. When you die, or I I shouldn't even say die because I don't believe in it, but let's say you die. Okay. Because that's how people, when Mm -hmm. you transition, you pass over. It's the experiences that we had to learn in each lifetime Mm -hmm. that we get to take with us. It isn't the cars. It isn't the money. No. It's it's all. It isn't the resume, guys. It is not. Believe it or not. They don't it, care that you were the CEO of blah, blah, blah. They don't. No. Nope. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's really the experiences that you got to experience mm-hmm. that is the true gift. Yeah. And that's the imprint. So yeah. if we imagine that we're all wearing a cape and on the cape are little stitches like a quilt, right? Like our, right. our Cub Scout badge. Like we've mm-hmm. got all these little badges from all the things that we did, good, bad, or indifferent. Yeah. And that's what we take with us over there are these f- impressions, these imprints. Right. Right? I believe that. You know, you sign up for your parents. And, mm-hmm. you know, people say this often to me. I signed up. My mother, oh, my God, you did. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was your way of giving your mother a chance to step up to the plate. Mm-hmm. And you were the sacrifice. Right. You know, it's funny, um, there was a circumstance recently where somebody had owed me something financial, right, and and just completely walked away from it, and I was frustrated, and I was talking with a um, healer that I've mentioned to you before, mm-hmm. Ken Wagner, who is a um, construction worker who was struck right. by lightning, and now he's this healer, and he says, you know, it's interesting, because in another, I'm seeing another scenario playing out where you did exactly that to them. So ah. they're doing this like at an unconscious level. They're it's like karmically they feel that they could do this, and I and I was like, oh wow! And then suddenly I wasn't mad anymore. I was like, ah, I'll deal without the money. It's okay. It'll come back somehow. You know? Oh well, geez. And then he said, are you ready to heal that? And I was like, huh? He goes, let's heal it. Let's forgive and forget unconditionally with love all lifetimes, all anytime it's ever played out, you know, the future lives, the past lives, whatever. He just did this whole big monologue, and I was like, ah, uh, sure. Isn't that cool, though? Well, then three days later, yeah, they called and invited me to a show, like a you know really generous thing and a dinner and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, isn't that hilarious? So when you do the healing, when you do the work, you open a pathway for new experiences to show up in a healing way. I think absolutely. And yeah. you, and you, when you do that, you're going to be surprised of how much more comes. Right now, I'm going to flip this. Did you ever meet somebody who constantly has all these energy vampires all over them? Oh, yeah. And they never they never seem to cultivate nice people that are trying to do something nice for them. It's always a one way show where yes. they're always doing for one, you know, them. OK, here's here's what I say to that. You know, I had a girl that was in my office yesterday and she says, why do I get all these idiots around me? And I says, maybe it's universe giving you another chance to get it right by you saying no. So universe keeps putting these type of roles in your life until you get it. And when you get it, those roles, exactly. Yes. It's a different actor in a new costume with the same challenge. It's so true. Yes. No, I I literally have a friend who every time she's at a job where she feels she's not appreciated by her boss, she quits, goes to another job, new boss, same Same issues, not appreciated. So she quits, goes to the new job. (laughs) This has happened six times. Then finally, I said, maybe you're supposed to stand up to 
your boss That's and say, right. this is my value. Do you see what I'm bringing to the table here? I'm doing this, 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 this. She did that. It shifted. She stayed at that job. You see? Yeah. So I, listen I to this. That. Everybody out there, if mm-hmm. you have a persistent challenge that is showing up and you'd rather run than face it, mm-hmm. wherever you run to, it will follow you. It will until oh, it you will. get it. It will follow And you. it may take lifetimes for you to get it. Right. Or many husbands or many wives well, <laughs> until you get it. it. You're right. <laughs> you know, somebody said, somebody said, I don't believe in, in past lives. Yeah. And and I said, do you honestly think that we're going to be able to ex- experience every facet to what our soul needs to grow with in right. one lifetime? Right. It's impossible. No. It is. And <laughs> why does, you know, Renaissance France feel, feel so familiar to me? And Egypt, I feel like I know it like the back of my hand and I've never been there. You know, that. how can you explain those things? Because apparently I might have had a lifetime there. Who knows? It's amazing. You know, um, from a little girl, I remember when I would hear about uh, Vietnam mm-hmm. and I'd start to cry. Mm. And my mother would say, why are you crying? I says, I don't know. Every time I see it on television, I just keep crying. Right. And I had no idea why. But I think that there was something that happened very sad there to me. Yeah. And maybe you were there. And I have no desire to ever want to go there because Mm. I have nothing but sadness there. And so you were six when you knew that you were wired a little differently than others. You kept it a secret, Susan, in your whole for decades. I had to. And you had to. And so for anyone out there who's listening who might feel that they have intuitive abilities, but they've kept it secret and they really don't want to, quote, come out, whether they're doing hair for a living or, or, you know, a, a vice president of a company, how would you encourage them to speak honestly? I mean... Dave Olson is a great example. This is a Chicago cop turned, you know, an empath turned Chicago cop turned paranormal investigator, you know, and that's not exactly a common conversation with first responders. Yeah, I I think there was a dead person in there. I heard whispers. Mm -hmm. But for people out there, there's a lot of thinning of the veil between these different, I believe, realities. What would you do to encourage them to speak out? I, I would want them to speak out when they're ready. Right. You have to be ready. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to speak out because you feel that you have to. Right. Because it is a responsibility that comes with it. Okay. So when you're ready, then you have to have the responsibility of knowing what's going to come next. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not ready for it, you're going to have all sorts of problems within yourself because you weren't ready. Ah. So I do believe that the timing has to be right in order for it to prevail in the right direction. And... It's coming through you, everybody, not from you. That's right. And that is a very important thing. I have seen so many people in your line of work who think it's all them, right? And then their ego gets out of control. And the next thing you know, you know, they're just impossible to work with. (laughs) You know, it's sad. You're right. Because if you lose sight of who you are, Mm -hmm. you know, You're no better than anybody else, and no one's better than you. Right. That's something I've always tried to teach my daughter, and I even try to follow that. Mm -hmm. I'm Susan. Yeah. I'm normal Susan, as well, normal as I could be. But, you know, lose the ego. Lose all that. If that's what you're about and you're doing it, you're doing it for the wrong reason. There is no job. No man, no no house, and no glass of Pinot Grigio that's going to make you whole and make you acceptable until you find yourself acceptable and until you love yourself. And I hate to get to that love yourself, don't leave yourself, but it's really true. Until you feel whole inside, nothing is going to fill that hole. And that is what I feel like people keep doing. Like, oh, if I just got, like I was talking to someone today on the phone, if I could just make this a bestseller, then... Dot, mm-hmm. dot, dot. Mm-hmm. If I could just get that promotion at work, then dot, dot, dot. If I could just right. move into another suburb, I'm sure you have it every day. People sit in front of you and say, you know, here's the deal. If I could just get a better job and get my husband to rub my feet every once in a while and get my kids to load the dishwasher, everything would be great. <laughs> you're right. You're, you're right. But you know what? I mean, we, we get into that mode. Right. Sure. Okay. But why do you think sometimes where I hear people that have had house fires, Mm -hmm. or they've lost everything in their home. Every single person that I know, and I've known a lot of people that this has happened to, unfortunately, but they've all come out of it with a much more humbling experience. Right. And they said, I learned I didn't need this stuff. 
And I learned that when I had to go and in a rental and I didn't even have a toothbrush, yeah. that just to have a toothbrush was pretty cool. Yeah. So you learn. So when something like that can happen, what, it's what you take away with. Mm-hmm. It, you know, people go, why did this happen? This isn't fair. I didn't do anything wrong. It's not being punished to you. It's actually you're being given a gift. Now you're going to say, get out of here. No, I'm not wishing a house fire on anybody. But boy, think about everything that's happened, what you've taken away with. Yeah. And now how you begin to live your life because of it. Think of when somebody passes and what you learn from their passing. It isn't that just somebody you loved passed. It's what the passing has done to you as an individual that now you've looked at things different. Look at your father's passing and look where it put you. Right. Think about it. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Right. I'd still be at CBS talking about everything's wrong back to you if he hadn't passed away. Exactly. And, And just to your point as well. Sold my house, sold my car, Mm -hmm. sold my vacation house, right? First world problems. Sold everything that I had, sold my car, sold my rug, sold my jewelry, rented an apartment over a garage, and I was never happier. I believe that. Absolutely. And you know what? Somebody said to me, when you have more things, it gets more confusing. Yeah. I had to lose it all to gain it all back. I think so, but you gained everything for the right reasons. Right. That was what was not in sync. I had the to, I had to build the new foundation. You know, very many times people say it's really great to unclutter. Mm-hmm. Okay, we we downsize our home, we got rid of all our furniture, but then I say, okay, now it's time to unclutter you. Right. It's great that you started with your home, but what about you? How do you unclutter your mind to the thoughts that you are constantly thinking over and over? What are you going to do to change that? Mm-hmm. So you've got to think about uncluttering that and going to a new mindset, but a new way that you're going to see things. And then life starts to change. Yeah. Not until you change inside, will it change outside? It does. It's a direct reflection. It's like a, a light at the lighthouse. It starts inside the tower and it beams out to the lake. So that is what everybody listening tonight, I hope you get this or today or this morning, or if you're at the gym or you're driving, wherever you are right now, make sure you shine your bright bright light from the lighthouse and susan will be my guest at the wilmot theater november 18th depending on when you're listening to this this is 2018 by the way when we are recording this in october (laughs) before um before halloween uh but november 18th at the wilmot theater you can go to jenweigel.com and click on gigs to find out more about that and people can find susan her youtube channel her blog and all things about susan at susanroland.com r-o-w-l-e-n so that is what I have to say. Did we forget anything, Susan? Not at all. You, you, you're you, good. Oh, please. I'm going to do a De Niro. You. You. <laughs> you got a gift. You. <laughs> you. I adore you. I love you to pieces. Oh, I love you, you know to pieces that. Too, Susan. <laughs> Thanks for shining your bright light. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I love when I'm here. I love having you I here. I mean it. Thank you. Let's go see if uh, the offices are haunted, shall we? You want to go see? Yeah, we got the paranormal investigator <laughs> over here. Get some of the equipment. Let's go. Let's go. We're right. All right. Everybody out there, stay spiritual, damn it. Treat others the way you'd like to be treated, and we'll see you next time. 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 Be treated, and we'll see you next time.